In this Grasshopper tutorial, we'll learn how to build a bracelet using a simple mathematic, the same as we learned prior, the graph mapper. But here we'll uh, learn something new called pipe variable. I think a lot of people know the pipe common in um, Rhino, but you can also use, uh, let me draw a circle to show you, you can also use the pipe in Rhino to define different thickness. But we can do the same in Grasshopper. So it's very powerful. So I just drew that curve. What I'm doing, I'm using the pipe variable node. So the curve is getting in with the normalization. So the length is 0 to 1. Define a range. So a, a value of number. Like how many time do you want, you know, how many different radius you want. You want a big one and a small. So here it's 2. If you want more, you could go 10. And now if I go close to that number, the noise has a lot of subdivision to do its magic. That might be pushing it a little bit too much. We could use different type of curve, as you know, we could use a sign. This could be very interesting. We don't want it to be at zero because it's too thin. So if we grab this one, we could give it thickness. So this is a very powerful way of generating things. And what does this one do? This is, uh, you don't have to use this one but it say uh, what's the minimum thickness. So you see it was disappearing is because I had zero. If I put this, it would never go to zero, look. So that's my domain like we use in the other video, the range, and this could go higher. So extremely powerful tool. Let's rebuild this from scratch. In Rhino, I just roughly drew a bracelet. Selected a few points to make it more 3D. So now we are ready to go into a grasshopper curve to link the curve to a data node. Orange means no thing, so set one curve. Now it's gray, means it has data, so this represents this. And the node we'll be using is called pipe variable, this one. And you see it has a few input. The curve, so that's easy. We want to reparameterize, so the length is from 0 to 1, so everything works with it. So next, what we need to do is generate a bunch of numbers to subdivide this. So if I just do a slider, it won't work, because you'll have 50 or 60 or 80, it'll just be one number. So what we want to do here, we do want a starting point, so I could 25, that's fine, but we need a range to generate in a way a series of numbers, and this will go to the step, as you know. So what will be output if I over? You see many, I've got 26. 25 plus zero is the index. But we want to play with those ones. And we want to do this in an interactive way. We'll use the graph mapper. So this will be for the parameter. And for the radius, we'll use the graph mapper. Now the problem here is that, as you can tell, let's go with Bezier problem we have here is that it clips at zero, it's too thin. So I need to tell him don't go, I could just do this. Huh? So this is enough to do a lot of concept. You don't need anything more than that. What's coming is just to really control the radiuses. So it's optional. It's the same as the other video we did on the next less. Construction domain, remap, it's to make sure we keep those values uh, under control. The target, the new, uh, the new range, the new domain, is going to be, let's say, 0.2 to all to copy to, let's say, 1. The old range is this, and the new one goes in radius. Voila. Now, it's whatever you do, it won't get too small. And if you want to close this well, uh, the cap has three options. Zero means none, that's what it's doing. One is flat, two is round. So if you do a slider with two, uh, look, 0 means open, 1 is flat, and 2 is round. So I think 2 looks nice. And to finish, so this is the cap. To finish, we can just uh, bake this. So bake, and here, say OK. And now the bracelet is here. You could just 3D print this.